we have uh, several who are uh, suffering today, and, uh, and here towards the end of the service, we'll have additional prayer. We're going to bracket the service in with prayer this morning. Uh, we'll have special prayer for um, soldiers uh, and for, you know, for the families. And, but right now, you know, I want to pray for us as a family. I could go down the list because uh, whether uh, it's Brother Mike's friend, Mike, who's going through some things. Uh, <laughs> I don't have time to share the details, but here's a man who uh, was suffering, going through some things, but he would shame many of us with what he's going through, but he still has hope for a future. Some of us, we get a bad note, we get a bad note from the doctor, and uh, it's all over with. No, it's not. I mean, I understand. It's, it, honestly, it's not over until it's over. We don't know. The only, the only, the only time I'd be concerned is to get a bad note from the Lord. Right. When, the Lord <laughs> when the Lord calls you, you're gone. Amen? Sister Robin, still, uh, we, I don't have details on that. We know that she's still in the hospital. We did have a good report Thursday that, uh, uh, yes? Her uh, white nut sales went down to point five, and she's not getting to come home. Hmm. Pacemaker's in? Huh? New pacemaker? The surgery. The surgery did wonderful. It did really good. Praise the Lord. The medicine she's on is killing the white blood cells and then it's down to four five. Mm. So she can't get it to come home until it's four until it's no That being said, although she blood visitors, don't. If you have any any if you could be carrying anything, don't. Don't. Right. Um, Phone call. A phone call would be great, uh, but, but I can tell you right now, sometimes, uh, well, I, I did call her, and uh, I said, you're screening your calls, aren't you? And she said, yeah, because I could hear her voice. She wasn't feeling well. Yes. Right. And I said, well, I feel special. I said, why is that? Because you took my call. Amen. <laughs> so if she doesn't take your call, don't, wait a second. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Oh, text her. Yeah. And if she answers, great. If not... Just pray, amen? That's what we're going to do right now. How many of you believe that God can move? I know, amen. amen. And, and, and hey, here's the thing. All of this, even today's service, is about one, two things. Number one, either A, getting out of the way, right? Or getting in the way. Of course, what does that mean? How many of you know if I say you, you, you need to be in the way? What does that mean? Be like Jesus. Oh, be like Jesus. If you were here Thursday night, you'd have heard me use that term a lot. Because Paul used it too. Uh, he, I, I don't have time to go. That's a whole other message. Maybe I'll talk about it tonight. But can we go to the Lord in prayer? Right now, would you just right now, just listen. I want you to get to a place right now with the Lord. I want you to right now ask the Lord to, to forgive you. You need to ask it because here's the thing. If you're, if you're estranged from him, if you're living any, any, any distance, if you're living in a, in, in a uh, willful disobedience to him, guess what? He might hear your prayer, but he might not be at liberty to answer your prayer. Amen. We're talking about interceding on behalf of someone else. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to sacrifice your pride. You might have to say something like, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me for being so obnoxious. Forgive me for being so stubborn. Forgive me, Lord, for being so obstinate. God, forgive me for being rebellious towards you and others. When it comes right down to it, Lord, against you and you only have I sinned. And because of that, Lord, I feel I need to come to you this morning and say, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy on me, Lord. Father, we're coming to you now, Lord, not just for our own sakes, not for our own safety, not for our own comfort. This morning, Lord, we're coming to you, Lord, on behalf of many others. Lord, in particular, Lord, for, for Brother Benz and Lord, for Sister Robin and Lord, for Brother Lord, for Brother Sullivan. And, and, and Lord, we can go on down the list and even on the list that we have on our bulletin today. But God, we're going to miss people. Lord, for, for Brother Old, Lord, Father. And, and Lord, for, for those who are have loved ones, the ones that we've named have loved ones. And, and God, that we know that they're sick. We know, Lord, that they're suffering. And we know, Lord, that our hand is, is not capable of making, we can't make them well. You can't. We can't sustain their life. You can. We can't save them. You can. But Lord, we can come to you and offer our 
our humble prayers and say this, Lord. Lord, we know that you have the power of life and death. We know, Lord, that you are the, you are the, the creator of everything and the sustainer of life. Lord, would you touch these people where they are? Lord, uh, for those who are not with us this morning because of health, because of emotional, because of whatever the thing is in their life, Lord, would you answer our prayers today, Lord, by dispatching, Father, someone, by dispatching your spirit, Lord, to move in their life. And Lord, would you prick them right now to let them know that they're not alone. And perhaps, Lord, turn on the light switch. As we here at the Lighthouse Village Church have done, we're, we're shining a light even right now. Let that light shine. The Lord, let it be a shine that represents your presence yes, yes. and your glory yes. in the earth. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And the church all said, Amen. 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 So today is Memorial Day weekend. Amen. Amen. A lot of things are going to go on. Um, the uh, St. Mary's Fest here in New Buffalo is uh, uh, I, I, they, they have got the wheels turning. I stopped in and uh, I, I didn't ride any rides yesterday. I don't know that I will ride any rides this year, but I hope to be able to go down there and at least maybe watch my grandkids ride some rides. And I don't know. I may have to ride the zipper. I may oh, just oh. have to ride the zipper. If uh, my grandkids are there, I may have to ride the zipper. Now I'll take off my glasses. I'll empty all my pockets. And then I'll tie my shoes tight. Yes. And I encourage them to do the same because we're going for a ride. Yes. <laughs> In the rain. <laughs> but the last two days have been beautiful. I got a chance to go down there yesterday and I got a chance to, to fellowship and to witness and to uh, to be able to encourage some, some of our own brothers and sisters, those who are of, of, uh, of the faith, maybe of a different denomination. But uh, what, a t what a time I had. And, and uh, you know, have you ever had this happen? Have you, ever, have you ever gone someplace and realized how missed you were? Yeah. Yeah. Sister Lynn, you had your hand up? I did. Tomorrow's the parade for the Memorial Day parade at 10 o'clock for New Buffalo. So if you live somewhere else, please look up in your paper or someplace and go support these Amen. military men and women that put their lives online for us. Um, in my family, there have been several starting with my dad, my brother, now my son-in-law. My son-in-law, he lives in pain every day because he was in the military two and a half years, jumping out of airplanes, guarding things, and being under fire. So these men went through a lot. They may have, like you said, some didn't come back and some came back lame, and, but sometimes it's emotional also. Mm -hmm. So just please, when you see a military man or woman, just thank them for their service. Brother Larry, I want to thank you now for your service. Debbie, Amen. she was in a short while, so we want to thank her too. Amen. Amen. But 10 o'clock, right down here on the <coughs> and, and listen, here's, here's the thing. Uh, if some of you have this attitude, shame on you. Well, you know, these people are coming around, they're such crowded, and the traffic, and this, that. Hold on. Sacrifice a little bit of, of, of convenience for the sake of honor. Yes. Amen. But here, sacrifice a little comfort. We've come to love, listen, we've come to love comfort way too much. Mm -hmm. mm. Which brings me to what I want to talk about today. Uh, it has to do with sacrifice. Let me see where, see if I get, let me see if I get to the slide I need to get to here. Go over here, we'll come back later. Okay. There we go. What a gift of sacrifice can do. And that's what we're gonna, we want to we want to focus on today. Okay. The gift of sacrifice. Um, in the in the movie Saving Private Ryan, there was a, a general who read a letter. It was a famous letter written by a famous president. His name was Abraham. Abraham Lincoln, that is. And he's reading it to uh, one of the characters' mothers, uh, Mrs. Bixby, in Massachusetts. And he reads this. Dear Madam, 
I have been shown in the files of the War Department a statement of the Adjutant General of Massachusetts that you are the mother of five sons who have died gloriously on the field of battle. I feel how weak and fruitless must be any word of mine which should attempt to beguile you from the grief of a loss so overwhelming. But I cannot refrain from tendering you the consolation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid, uh, to have laid so, so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Yours very sincerely and respectfully, Abraham Lincoln. Amen. Every war that this nation has fought, mothers, fathers, parents have sacrificed their sons and today even their daughters for the cost of freedom. Amen. Through these acts of de dedication and devotion, and an unselfish resolve, our nation has continued to secure its freedom. Amen. What has the sacrifice gained for us? Freedom. What has the sacrifice preserved for us? Freedom. Amen. Sacrifice is defined in Webster's Dictionary as the surrender of something for something else. Every true sacrifice comes at a price. It's costly. Freedom, as you heard, is not free. But when it is done for the glory of God, every sacrifice is acknowledged and it's also rewarded by God. Amen. This morning I want to speak to you on the gift of sacrifice and what the gift of sacrifice can do. And I think you're going to see from several patches as here in, in, in God's holy word, the scriptures, that God can do extraordinary things through sacrifices that we make for him. But before we look at the passages, I want to begin by revealing the origin of sacrifices that bring glory to God in the great increase. Such sacrifices begin with a love for God in response to his love for us. Amen. Amen. The Word of God says, I appeal to you, therefore, in Romans 12 and 1, brothers, by the mercies of God, I'm begging you. I'm not preaching at you. I am begging you. By the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, what? Holy and acceptable yes. to God, which is your spiritual worship. You see, nothing great was ever accomplished without sacrifice. Right. Nothing great was ever was ever accomplished without sacrifice. Nothing of, of worth was ever acquired without cost. Now, some of us we've been given things. Some of us we've, we've received privilege and we've received different honor and. And, and I have been gifted in, 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 at times, and I'm thinking, I don't deserve this. And the person says, yes, you do. You deserve this because of you've done this, and you've sacrificed there, and you've done this. To which I say, well, thank you. But all glory to God that I was able to pay the cost, to earn, what is to even earn that respect. How do you know that respect is earned? Yes. Amen. How many think God has earned respect? Amen. Then perhaps we need to give it to him. You see, such sacrifices are a part of our daily walk with God. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, he says, and, and said to all, if anyone would come after me, watch this, if anyone would come after me, who's talking here? If anyone would follow me, who's talking? And what's his name? Jesus. Jesus. Listen to what he says. If anyone would come after me, if anyone would follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Hmm. 
But Brother Ed, I don't feel like it today. I had to work all week long. And I got to go to work on Monday. Or maybe, maybe you know, I don't feel like it and you don't deserve it. Or maybe you don't. <laughs> but look at what he says. You must deny self. But you're going to listen to me. No. no. <laughs> Are you someone that someone should listen to? Have you, listen, have you earned the right to be heard? I don't have time to get there, but we'll, I'm sure over the course of time, as I'm allowed to, we'll get into the Proverbs, and it talks about the fool who argues with the fool. Wait a minute. <laughs> what does it make them both? Fools. Fools. Oh. Now, don't be going home and say, Pastor, call me a fool today. <laughs> well, maybe I did, but if the shoe fits. <laughs> Just so you know, brothers and sisters, sometimes I feel like that fool. A Christian's life should be marked by <laughs> sacrifice. But you know, too many of us, we don't do it. And the reason we don't do it is because we love to play the victim. Well, you know, he, he did this, she said that, and you know, it just made me hurt my feelings so bad, I just, no, I can't. We want to play the victim. Jesus hanging on the cross, what, a, what an example. Paul the Apostle, what example we see there. You see, you go way back. Go back, go back to the, the book of Genesis in the beginning. Don't go there because I got you in Genesis 22. Don't go back. Just stay on 22 for right now. But in the beginning, you find out right there around chapter 3 where everything just kind of fell apart, right? Um, didn't take long. You find that uh, Adam's playing the victim. <laughs> Blaming everybody else on, on what's going on and it's that woman you gave me got to the point where he's blaming God. You know, there are people today in the world that, that maybe you don't understand this, and maybe you do. Maybe you understand it all too well. They feel that God has slighted them. They're playing the victim. Guess, just so you know, God does not want us to be his pawn. And when we talk about being used of God, it's not, it's not being used like being used by someone in the world. Are you getting what I'm saying this morning? You see, we don't, we don't like the sacrifice because we really prefer to play the victim because we're looking for something else. We sacrifice knowing that, that by giving up something, we will receive something better in return. We sacrifice knowing that through it, that's why we should do it. We sacrifice because if we do it, God's going to get the glory. I want to give you a challenge. A challenge to change. A challenge to be transformed. A challenge to, to live that new life that you've been promised. A challenge to take a chance on, on the fact that it might not be easy. Wait, no, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to make sacrifices along the way. There was a quote that some of you may have heard probably somewhere. I know I saw it on on one of the social sites, it says, there are not equal gifts, but equal sacrifice. I mean, in order for, for us to be successful in, I'll, I'll call this a campaign to, tra to be transformed, to be changed, every one of us are going to have to, to give sacrificially. And you know why? Because it's a form of our spiritual worship. Well, let me, let, me, let me check with the bank and see if I can afford that. You know what's interesting about all this? Uh, we'll do things that we can't afford for the sake of comfort, for the sake of preference. But when it comes time, when it comes time for giving for the sake of the church or for the sake of God, well, let me see if I can. We want to give God the leftovers. 
What if we did what the word tells us to do? Give to him first. How many of you have ever practiced that? How's it worked out for you? And when you didn't do it, how did it work out? Oh, it's not pretty. It's not so good, not pretty. It's not pretty. You see, this message, though, I want you to hear it right now. You know what I'm going to be telling you right now? It's not just about your money. I'm talking about fools and fools. A fool and his money shall soon part. Uh, but it's not about that. It's about a lifestyle that if all of us were to pursue it, that that lifestyle is a selfish lifestyle, God-honoring devotion to God's glory and not our own. If we would pursue that, So what can sacrifice do? Well, it can do great things, amen? amen. We, we know today is about Memorial Day. It can do great things. We, we know that there are those who some gave some, some gave. And, and, and get this, in a sense, I, I see, and I'm sure there are other, so, other nations which have soldiers, like our Marines, no one left behind. They, they want to make sure everybody comes home, amen? And I thank God that for the most part, our nation has seen to that. But there are many who never come home. See, it costs something. Some gave some, some gave all. But what it comes right down to is that the greater sacrifice is the greater. So the greater the sacrifice, the greater the what? Love. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the love. Oh, our children. We'll sacrifice for our kids. But there has to you say, well, there's a limit to that, Pastor. Well, yeah, there is. But we will sacrifice. Amen. I, I, I have, uh, I, I work with people and they're the other kind of people who they, they, they try to help send their kids through school. Uh, there's one very dear friend of mine who, uh, uh, his, his daughter was in, in the final years of college and, uh, you know, and they actually had, uh, help to fund and so she didn't have to go get these she didn't have to go get loans they took out loans to help pay for their education and her last year of college she died <laughs> leaving the debt to which some would say what a waste yeah but she was young yes. but to some would say no 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 I'm talking about now they have to pay all this, this money back and they have to pay a debt for an education that even the one who went to school never benefited from. Sacrifice. It was a sacrifice. Was it worth it? I'm telling you right now, I, spoke, I, I spent some time with him here recently, and you know what he said? It was worth it. It was worth it. What can a sacrifice do? Well, Sacrifice, a sacrifice, a, a gift of sacrifice can make your faith rock solid. Genesis chapter 22, who's got it? I need someone to read Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 and 2, please. Big and loud, Brother Harold. Now it came to pass after these day, things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, mm -hmm. whom you love, mm. and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell shall tell you. Offer him what? Offering burnt as a burnt offering. Wait a second. Um, so God is asking Abraham to do what? Sacrifice. 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 Yes. His son. His only son. His only son. Can you imagine this? Some of us, we just kind of, in passing, we thought of it. Can you imagine that, get this, you've waited for years for God's promise of a son to come true. You've waited, and he asked you to offer him up as a sacrifice. 
what, this is an amazing thing. I, I read this, and as I'm thinking of today, and I'm thinking of not just because of today, the, the Bible gives no inclination that Abraham even hesitated. No. He said, well, you know, Lord, let me think about it. No, he didn't say that. And here I am. Isaac. Yes, Dad? Get up. We have to go to Moriah. Moriah? For what? I'll explain later. It's time to go. This isn't the first time that Abraham had to sacrifice and completely trust that God do what he was doing. You see, when we first meet Abraham, God is asking him to do something. He says to him, he wants him to leave his family, leave his country, leave the comforts of home to go to a land that God is going to show him. In order for Abraham to go to the right place, he had to trust God. In order for him to trust God, he had to first listen to God. And then he had to, let's watch this, he had to walk with him every step of the way. Watch this. God is with everyone, but not everybody is with God. We're not walking with God. Just so you know, to be honest, sometimes I think I stumble a little bit. I have times, I have times when that, when that old song starts playing in my head. Daddy, don't you walk so fast. Because God wants me to do some things I don't feel I'm ready for. But Lord, can I just, let me, let me just rest here just a little bit. I'm tired. How many of you know that he will restore? Amen. We will mount up with wings as eagles. We shall run and not wow. And we'll walk and not faint. Run. See, and as you read the book of Genesis, Abraham displays great faith in God. But this was going to be the biggest test in his entire life. On their way, Isaac asked a whole lot of questions. You know, kids do that, right? Are we there yet? We, well, I don't know if Isaac ever asked that. But get this. Um, Father, why are we going to Moriah? Abraham says, uh, well, to offer God sacrifice. Father? Yes, yes, son. I, I see the wood. I see the knife. But where is the sacrifice? Isaac, my son, God will provide the sacrifice. Amen. Amen. They get to the mountain. Abraham and Isaac, they go up and they begin to assemble the altar. They're working together, father and son, side by side. And then, and then Abraham binds his son's hands and feet. Now, I don't see any indication that uh, his son is fussing with his father at this moment. Hmm. He lays his son on the altar, but before he can execute what he's been asked to do, before he can slay his son, Abraham hears the voice of God. Brother Harold, you did so good. Can you read verse 11 and 12, please? 11 and 12. Yes, I can. <clears throat> but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. So God speaks, Abraham, Abraham. Yes. Hold on there. I know now that you fear me. Not only do you fear me, but watch this. I know that you not only believe in me, 
I know that you trust me. The word of God says to lean not on, on, on your own understanding, right? But in all things acknowledge God. Abraham, before that scripture was ever written, he was living it. Yes, he was. He was living it. You see, that sacrifice made Abraham, in this story, he, he, he had produced in him a solid rock type of faith in God. And you know, that is amazing to have that kind of faith. The faith that was given to Abraham is spoken of in the book of, uh, of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 and 19. says, by faith, say by faith. By faith. Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac and uh, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able, say he was able, he was he was able. even to raise him from the dead, from which figuratively speaking, he did not, he, or he did receive him back. He did receive him back. God said, will you give him to me? And listen, by his acts of obedience, Abraham said yes. And even his son, what was his son's name? Isaac. Isaac. Look at this. It said that through Isaac shall your offspring be named. There's another promise here, and I don't have time to go there today, but I want you to hear today. You need to trust in the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Did you catch that? Here, here it is. Here it is. Abraham's sacrifice began long before they ever got to Moriah. In his heart, he had already offered his son back to God. This heart of sacrifice was given the faith that it went through in the offering. If he did not have the faith, he never would have even made, he would have hesitated. He would have not obeyed. And that's what many of us were doing. We're hesitating or not obeying. Can I tell you, to hesitate quite often is rebelliousness. Yes. Well, pastor, I just need to know exactly what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> have you ever been to a place that you've never been to before? <laughs> Me. Have you ever been to someone's house who you've never visited before? And you, I mean, and they're different people. They're people from a whole different social class. And you get there, and you're not really sure how to act. You know, it's like this: you go to McDonald's, you act one way. You go, you go to oh, well, I don't know. Um, give me, give me the name of a uh, town restaurant, Red Lobster. You act another way. You go to, you go to Stray Dog. You go to, the, you go, you go to the Country Bar and Grill. You act. Can I tell you, I act the same way every place I go. But here's the thing. There are places that when you show up, they look at you. You don't have a white shirt on. And you got jeans. Adios. And I go, and, I, and listen, I'll just tell you, I, from, from, from now on, since I've watched Lord of the Rings, you <laughs> shall not pass. Oh, that's right. Wait a second. <laughs> you go to a place that's, that's, listen, they have a dress code. They were at, you have a shirt and tie. When you go in, you have to act a certain way. And get this, they'll act a certain way towards you. You might want to learn, but there are times when you don't get the opportunity to be told exactly what to do. Well, I would do it if I knew. Hold on. I mean, sometimes the doing is the learning. And get this, what we see here is we see, we see both sides. Some would say, well, God already knew what Abraham was going to do. He already knew. There was, no, there was no chance. Hold on a minute. I know this is going to mess with some of your theology. There was no chance that Abraham would not obey because God already knew. Can I tell you that it doesn't really work that way because there is still, there's this thing called free will. Here's what God knows. Just walk with me on this. Would you give me the liberty today of saying this right now? Uh, okay, he's either going to go this way or he's going to go that way. Amen. 
but we shall see. When it gets right up to the end, when it gets right up to when it matters the most, we shall see. And, and we see what happened in this scenery. He lifts his hand. God says, I see now. Abraham, Abraham. <laughs> How many of you know God also provided the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Abraham's sacrifice began long before they ever got to Eliah. Yes. His heart, in his heart, he had already given his son back. Amen? Amen. You see, the heart of sacrifice was given the faith that it went through with the offering, and God could raise his son back. When you give to God out of sacrifice, God will give you the faith to see you through it. Amen. Faith is not just something you decide to have. How many know it's a gift? Amen. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm willing to sacrifice, there's a gift that comes. One thing that we get is we get faith rock solid. So if we want that rock solid faith, we're going to have to be willing to give him everything. Some might say, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I I live her. I surrender to Jesus. I surrender. Now I don't have time to read the whole uh, this whole text coming up next. Uh, if, I think I've got it in your bulletin for John chapter six. Is it in there? Yeah. Yeah. John chapter six. I'm going to turn there, though, because I, I don't have the whole chapter memorized. Isn't that something? <laughs> but here, here we see something else, that a gift of sacrifice can meet the needs of others. And can I tell you that, 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 that as I've been in ministry and service since I've been here, I have watched and I have seen that the, uh, the needs of others have been met. Amen? Yes. But you see what's happened is that they, 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 uh, they've gone over to the Sea of Galilee. They've been, they've been doing ministry. Now they cross over and there's a great multitude that followed them. And they followed him. Why? Because they saw the signs and wonders that he did. He did great things in their sight. Yes. And then later on in the story, and I, I, you can read this for yourself later, but we see that he comes across the he comes across the sea, and way down here in verse twenty one, it says, "Then they were they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going." On the following day, when the people were standing on the other side of the sea, he saw that there was no other boat there except the one which the disciples had entered. And then Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but the disciples had gone away. Going on down the street, in, uh, down the street, in verse 26, um, listen to this. He says, uh, most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. I, I'm not going to really belabor the story, but there was something that happened here between verse uh, verse 1 and verse 29 or 30. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. It's a little boy. How many of you know what happened in the middle of all this? There was, a, there was a group of people there that come across on the boat, and I just shared some things. You know, it's interesting that he got there. There's no other boat there. But right there in the middle of all these other things that were going on, there was something else that happened. People were gathering. You know what they didn't do? They didn't pack a lunch. Now, Andrew and Simon, and, and Simon Peter's brother said to him, um, he said that, that there's a lad who has some, he's, he's got a sack lunch. I mean, think about it. There is a small character right in the middle of this story that most of the time we look over this little boy. Mm -hmm. 
There's no, there's no, there's no horns blaring. There's no fanfare. There's, there's no parade. There's no hype. Not even 15 seconds of fame. But God used the gift of a little boy to do a great thing. I want you to know that this is such a great work that the miracle of feeding the 5,000 is recorded in every one of the Gospels. Hold on. Make a note of this. This miracle is recorded in every one of the Gospels. This little boy is noted in every one of the Gospels. He feeds the multitude. But even the boy's gift is not given much thought. Look at verse 9. What, 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 are, uh, what are they for so many? What? what five loaves and two fish? There's too many people. What, what's the big deal here? You see, in the disciples' eyes, the, the need to feed so many eclipsed both the gift of fresh bread and the ability of Christ to meet that need. They saw the need was bigger. They saw the need was, was, was so much greater than anything they thought that they could do. Well, they didn't know how they are going to make this happen. But did Jesus need the fish and the bread to feed the 5,000? Did he need that? No, he didn't need it, did he? He needed, what was that? He used it as a demonstration. This little boy, all he's got is a little sack lunch. That's all he's got. He absolutely didn't need it. Even Satan, while he was tempting Jesus, he knew that Christ had the ability to make bread from a stone. So here's the thing. Let me share this with you here and then we're going to move on. Jesus does not need our gifts. Oh, I gotta get through this. <laughs> he doesn't need our gifts. God is not uh, in, in, is not in poverty that He's waiting for our hand out. No. But He loves to use His children. He loves to use their gifts to do His miraculous work. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. Like prayer, prayer is our ability to be involved with what God is doing. But also, he gives us gifts so we can actually have a hand in it. Amen. You may feel like this little boy. You may feel that you don't have so much. and You may feel that you are not very prominent or not very uh, capable of doing things. But God can use such an attitude to do mighty things when you don't feel like you're all that much. Little as much when? You see, God's economy is not like our own. Well, let me check with the bank, see if I can afford that. Little is much when God is in it. Do you believe that this morning? Yes, I do. Here's the thing. Labor not for the wealth or the fame. There's a crown. And you can win it. If you go in Jesus' name. I'm going to say that again. It's poetic, right? Yes. Labor not for the crown, or they will not for the wealth and frame. There is a crown that you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So as you, as you give to God sacrificially, God can use your gift to reach many with the gospel. Well, you know, I can't quote this. I can't do that. So what you do, you do nothing. You sit out. There, there's a song we haven't sang in a while, but we use the words we know. Uh, you, somebody might know this. Sometimes you just use what you do know. Don't be afraid to be questioned for the things you don't. And that's the thing that we're afraid of the most. We're afraid that we're going to be, we're going to be proved to be something. That's the truth. I'm not omnipotent. I'm not omnipresent. I'm not omni anything. I'm just me. And you may catch me one day, oh, you might get this, Sister Margaret, one day I might seem to answer, I have a lot of answers to a lot of questions. Other days you may call me up and say, I don't know. I, Brother Mike, your sons are going to do it one day, they thought you knew everything. Wait, no, wait. It's the other way around, they think they know everything. Okay. <laughs> But as you give to God sacrificially, God can use your gift 
no matter how little it is. I, that's a whole other message, right? Every one of us, we've got a gift. And by using those gifts, God gives us a gift back. Amen. Faith. And the last point to make is that a gift of sacrifice can change the world. Somebody tell me what it says in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Get, get this. Somebody, I, I, I'm just going to lay this out there. <laughs> Some of you are going to go like this. Watch this. God, who could create something out of nothing... God who, listen, even his son Jesus who could create bread from a stone. Even the devil knew that. What's the big deal? God could have made another son. He made his only begotten son. Someone actually pulled that on me. To which my response was this. <laughs> You're kidding me right now, huh? He said, no, I'm not. He said, you, you Bible thumpers are all in. He got into this big old rant, you know, remember this rant? And I was expecting any time that either somebody was going to get punched to me. Anyway, just so you know, I had to put my hand in my pocket. But, um. <laughs> Silence is golden. And here's my response. Sometimes it's, listen, sometimes you just need to let the ranters rave. I said, well, let me ask you this. Mr. Smith. No, his name wasn't Smith. I couldn't think of anything else. But Let me ask you this. Do you have children? Yeah. I've got kids. Yeah, I said, um, how old are you? He told me his age. And I said, how old is your life? Said, oh, so you can have more kids if you wanted to. Yeah, but we really don't want any more kids. I said, I'll tell you what, though. How about I take your firstborn? You're not taking one of my kids. What are you talking about? You can make more. I was waiting for the punch, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you can knock him out. But you'll, you'll appreciate this, Sister Amanda. You, you know what the response I got was? <laughs> and, he, and he actually did this. He, he did that, and he did kind of step back. He said, well, when you put it that way, <laughs> what were you willing to sacrifice? God who gave his only son. And the word of God says, God who spared not his only son. I mean, if you think about this, he gave his son. Okay, so he could create. He is the, listen, he creates everything. He's the giver of life. He could have made another one. But that's not the point, is it? She needs a blanket. She's cold. You see, the ultimate sacrifice was given by God the Father and God the Son, and He gave it. I can say this morning just for you. He gave His best for us, His only begotten Son. What a sacrifice. Look at what this gift has done. Can I tell you that this gift changed the world? In the history of mankind, there has been no sacrifice that was paid more and had such a great impact than the sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. More people love to hate that story than are you getting this? Amen. And maybe that's how sometimes we can understand how an American soldier, because you know, to, to recognize what, what that means when the soldiers come home and, and we start, we, really what's happening, we're trying to do like many of us do, we try to dress up a cross to make it look nice. <laughs> Just so you know, kids, I think you probably recognize this. The games that you play, you don't get a do-over when you get wiped out. When your life, when your life energy is gone, you're, it's gone. So I say, oh Lord. But look at what has happened because of the sacrifice. It causes great sinners to become saints. It causes persecutors of the church, his name was Paul, by the way, to become the greatest missionaries. And if you're a Christian, he has changed your world, and he's not done changing it yet. Praise the Lord. And if you're not a Christian, God has a desire to change your world. Amen. Nobody is ever going to match that gift. Uh, Harold and uh, Ed, we will receive an offering after our ceremony. Um, 
As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's just do it. Uh, okay, Brother Larry, would you make your way up here? Would you come up, please? receive an offering and uh, then we're going to do something um, and we're going to close with prayer in our closing prayer here in just a few minutes it's kind of hard to condense the types of prayers that we needed to be saying for those who are in, in harm's way and those who have their loved ones in harm's way the soldiers and families amen it's a real deal it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a frightening thing out there in the world. Amen? Amen. It's real. It's, it's not a video game. It's not, you know, it's not something just on the internet. No, it's real, it's real people giving their lives. And even like right now, some of you here this morning, you would be giving sacrificially. Some of you do. Some of, some of you do. You, you've been very uh, faithful in your giving and and some of you have gone beyond that to where it becomes a sacrifice. You've given out of your need. Amen? How many of you appreciate those who've been able to sacrifice like that? Amen. Amen. Brother Larry, would you pray over the offering as uh, we prepare? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day, O oh Lord God, that you given to us. We just thank you for everyone that's made it out here today, oh Lord God. To hear your word, yes, Lord. your love, oh Lord God. As we prepare to receive a tithes and offering, oh Lord God, we ask that you bless it. Bless the gift and the giver, oh Lord God, to meet the intended use of the church. Just in your precious name. Amen. 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 Brother, I need to have you kind of. Yeah, criticize ways that you must.